Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. You're probably hearing some background noise because we're having a heck of a storm outside right now. The wind is just howling. The rain is pounding off of the roof here in the shop. But we're so thankful. This, this moisture is just a godsend. We've been in such a severe drought over the last couple of years here on the ranch. But what that means is we're probably not going to get to go out and do any shooting today or see some beautiful scenery like we, we normally do on these episodes. But instead, we're going to bring you along on a project on this classic Winchester 1895 flat side rifle. Now this one's just a shooter grade, but it's in really nice shape. Now it's had the barrel shortened to 22 inches, it's been re-blued, but it's got a really nice bore and this Lyman Model 21 receiver sight, which is a very nice feature on these 95s. But it has a big problem. At some point in the past, the tang's been broken, this upper tang, and it needs to be welded back on, and there's quite a process to that. Now the weld itself isn't particularly difficult, but keeping that tang lined up just right as we weld it is, is quite a process. So I'll, I'll show you my process for doing that and, and how to weld this up and hopefully we get it all back together and, and lined up just right and looking good. Okay, so let's get this tang screw out of here and see what we got to work with. I see our tang screw's buggered up a little so we'll clean that up before we put things back together here. I also see we've got a little brad here in the front of the stock. There must be a crack there they're trying to hold together and we'll fix that up right and get rid of that brad. Okay, so here we go and here Tang comes right off with the butt stock here. Now it's a really nice clean break we can see and it right across the back of where the, the tail of the hammer goes into that groove right there so that's that's a weak spot and that's typically where, they, where they're going to break if they do break. Now the nice thing here is we're quite a ways away from the Winchester stamp on the, on the tang here. So when we weld this up and then uh, grind it down, draw file it, polish it, all that, we can stay away from the markings here. It's really a problem when you get a break right in the markings to either have somebody that's that's got a Winchester stamp, which is pretty unusual or have somebody have to re-engrave it, find an engraver who can do that kind of work. So we're kind of fortunate there. So let's look at how we have to um, set this all up and prep it for welding. Now there are some real challenges we have to overcome when we're welding the tang on. Now if you're new to welding you might think that we just come along here, put the tang back up there, line it up and, and weld over the top here and weld over the bottom here and smooth it all up and re it and we're done. Now of course we'll get a little bit of penetration from that weld down into here, but as you can see, that's going to leave about 80% of that crack still there. And guess what? It is weak. And the next time you put any pressure on that, it's just going to break right there at that, that crack again. So what we need to do is V out where we're going to weld. And we're going to leave a little bit in the middle here so that we can, we can still line things up properly, or this way. Um, if we V'd it all the way out just to a knife edge, then it'd be really hard to get everything lined up properly. And we're going to V out the top a whole lot more than the bottom. Uh, one of the issues we have with 95s is, is that we don't have a removable lower tang, so um, access is going to be a bit of a problem. But there's, there's another reason as well, and that's that when we, when we weld in here, when that puddle cools and becomes solid again, it creates a lot of stress and it draws this up. So we're going to weld this top and we're going to have to keep it really locked in place and we're going to have to make some, some uh, jigs to make that happen. And so we're going to hold that, but there's still going to be a lot of tension there. So when we go back down here and weld a smaller weld on the bottom, then we hope that that tension is going to pull it back and, and get everything um, to stay in line. And, and we're going to, we're going to be if everything goes well, reasonably successful with that. So we're going to go in here, we're going to weld over the top here, and of course we're going to get some penetration um, of that molten pool all the way down like this, about halfway through that hopefully, and then we'll go down and weld this here, and again we'll get some penetration, and so that should take care of the entire crack from top to bottom. Then we'll go back in, we'll we'll draw file and, or grind these, this off, polish it up, and re-blue it. Okay, so now we're going to take a good share of this 1895 apart um, for a couple of reasons. One, it's going to help us get some access 
to where we're going to weld, it's going to take some of the mass out of the receiver so that we're not going to hold so much heat. We'll let that heat dissipate out of the receiver um, as quickly as possible. And thirdly, this thing is really gummed up and the action's stiff on it, so it just needs to be taken apart and get cleaned up. The first thing we'll do, we'll take off this fore end. Now we just need to take the locking blocks out, eh, or locking block in the case of a 95. And that's as far as we need to go. I'm just going to leave the sear and the sear spring in there. Now it's time to start prepping this thing. We need to clean it up. This thing is just greasy. My hands are just gummed up as bad as the internals on this thing. And then we're going to clean things up and start prepping them for getting started welding. Okay, now we'll use this belt grinder to cut out these V's. Okay, so we're doing a little bit of touch up just with a diamond file here just so we don't overshoot on the grinder there. And you can see the, the uh, receiver's in here upside down, so this would be the, the top part of the tang. We've got the deeper V here, the narrower V on the bottom part of the tang, and then a little bit of the, the fracture there that can made up with the, the other portion in the middle there. And of course, again, when we weld this, we'll get some penetration and, and go about halfway through that portion that we haven't ground and then go, when we do the bottom side, we'll get the other side. So we should take that entire fracture out when we weld. All right, so we've got both sides of these, this fracture uh, ground out and veed the way we want it to start welding. Now the next challenge is we need to come up with some kind of a jig or fixture to hold this tang in place and at the right angle so that we can weld it. So that's where this other flat side 95 comes in. Um, this one's a, a um, real early one. I think it's serial number 143. This one's been poorly refinished in the past and uh, I've got it in for a complete uh, restoration. But we'll use it for a, a template or a jig for this, for this other one to make sure we've got the, the right angles and the right space between the the tangs. Now one of the challenges is the tangs aren't parallel to each other. Um, so we can't just put a parallel block in between, clamp them down and weld. We're going to have to be a little more um, inventive than that. So what we'll do here is we'll take the, the butt stock off and then we'll see just the distance uh, between the tangs, right where the tang screw goes through. And then we're going to cut a little piece of pipe to the right length and, and then we're going to have to figure out the angles to cut those at because of the fact that they're, they're, the tangs aren't square to one another. So first off, we'll get my glasses on here and we'll measure the exact distance right in the center of these two tang screw holes. And it looks like 1.340. Okay, so we've, we've got the distance. Now we'll use this uh, machinist compass or square to get the angles then we'll take this little piece of pipe over to the mill and cut it not just to length but cut the proper angles into both both uh, ends of it so that we can use it in, in between these two tangs to hold it up. Okay so let's just see how well we did with our crude little spacer here. Well it fits right in there like it's supposed to. Looks like we uh, got it just right. Okay, so now if we've got the angles cut just right and the lengths cut just right, occasionally we can get these things to line up with just this spacer on the back end. And uh, I've had it happen before, but, but never on the first try. That one really fit well there. Let's see if we get everything lined up and tightened up here if we'll get lucky. 
Oh, what do you think about that? Okay, so that looks like it's lined up really, really well. And it's in there good and tight. I, I can't even move it. So that's, that's kind of just blind luck, I guess. I, I'd like to say it's skill, but I'm not sure. Um, so let's see if we put this right over the top of this one. It looks like we're lined up just beautifully. So I think it's time to get over to the welder and, and see if we can't get that thing welded up. We've got one more thing to do. We're going to have to remove some of this bluing from around where we're going to weld because any kind of contamination, anything but good clean steel is going to contaminate that weld. And what happens is, is we'll get... Um, little air bubbles in the weld and then of course when it solidifies then we've got what we call porosity or a porous weld so we'll get that all cleaned up real good and we'll head over to the welder okay so here's our setup we've got everything lined up just right clamped up tight and we're just getting ready to strike that first arc so what we'll do is we'll, we'll tack each side just so we can get it even more solid and then we'll go back and, and weld up each side good and solid, and then we'll flip it over and, and get the bottom side. Now we've got each side tacked up and we can go ahead and proceed to fill that weld. Okay, so we've got these top welds completed and if you notice there's just a little void right in here and, and right over here that we'll have to fill out with a real fine filler rod. Now speaking of filler rod, one of the issues we have when we're welding on vintage firearms is that the alloys in the filler, modern filler now speaking of filler rods, one of the issues we have when we're TIG welding on vintage firearms is that the modern filler rods are a completely different alloy uh, than these original guns. So what happens is a lot of times the, the bluing will take a little bit differently to the modern filler rods, or the modern steels. So we're fortunate in that Brownells makes a, a filler rod that is more closely alloyed to the, the original firearms. And it's not perfect because not every manufacturer used the same alloy, but, but it's a lot closer. So it, it should take the bluing and not discolor um, nearly as much as, as if we were using the, the modern type filler rods. So, and make a couple of different sizes. So on this first pass where we were kind of filling pretty deep in the, in the middle of this weld, I used a, a thicker 080 rod and now we'll go back where we've got it, some, some fine uh, work to do, finish work, and with a 045, a much finer little rod.
Now the first test is going to be when we take this tang screw and spacer out to see if we've introduced a bunch of stress into this by welding. And what will happen is, is either it will want to spring back out of here when we loosen it up, which it's not doing, or it will be in a bind this way and, and just holding that spacer in there tight. Either way is going to make it hard to get the stock to fit properly. Okay, so we didn't spring up. We've just, oh, and it slides right out just like uh, about the same pressure we had when we put it in. So we really got fortunate there because when you've got all this heat going on up here, it's really easy to introduce that stress in there. But because we welded the, the thicker welds first, the, the heavier welds on top, uh, and it wasn't able to spring up this way, um, we probably introduced some stress that way, and then the, the lighter welds on the bottom probably pulled back down, and we, we just were fortunate to get it just right, so it's, it's not in a bind in any way. So now it's just a matter of, of uh, filing these welds down. We get really close, and then we'll, we'll go to um, some, some emery cloth and, and polish it all up and whatnot, and, and now it's, it's just kind of a time-consuming process now. Um, and it's a, it's a little bit at a time, especially when, you know, when, we, when we first start, we can hog some off quite a little bit. But when we get closer, we don't want to take material off alongside the weld very much. So we've, it's really kind of a slow, painstaking process to, to get this done properly. So we'll get started here, and then when we get a little bit closer, we'll, we'll bring you back and kind of show you how we finish things off here. Now we've gone through our file progression on this left side of the tang. We started off with just a, a six inch smooth cut file taking the high spots down. Then we progressed to a, a fairly coarse needle file to get it really close. And then lastly a, a diamond encrusted file to finish it off. And that's where we're at right now. We've just, just finished up with our, our coarse needle file and, and gonna start on this side with our diamond file. When we get done, then we still need to polish. That, that diamond file leaves about a 220 grit appearance and we wanna go through to 320 and then 400. So we can see that the polish marks where this gun was uh, refinished are going across ways this way. So we wanna alternate our pattern. So since we filed in this direction, we're gonna go with our 320 in this direction and then we'll come back at the end when we got everything polished up to 320 and and we'll do a 400 grit kind of a shoe shine method over it like this and then we're ready to blue all right this tang's all welded up filed down polished up now let's make sure this buttstock's going to fit and there we go fits like a glove so we've, now we've got to take these brads out and do a little repair on the cracks there and the, and the shoulders um, get a little blue on this tang and time to put her back together. Now this is a pretty involved repair and a tough one to get just right. Now I know there aren't a lot of you that would take on this kind of a repair in your home hobby workshop and to be honest there's a lot of gunsmiths that probably wouldn't take on this particular repair. But I thought you might find it interesting to see the process anyway. So thanks for joining us. I hope you learned something today and until next time happy trails from the Cinnabar.